Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. September 13th, 2022. We are minutes after the cash close here on a trading session to remember. S&P is off by the tune of over 4%. The NASDAQ down over almost 5.5% moves. Listen, let's actually break down some of the action in the marketplace, but more importantly, what we can kind of anticipate moving forward. All right, let's start with some of the obvious. To get some of you up to speed of what occurred inside of the marketplace, all right, in the pre-market, we had a 100-point, that's right, 100-point S&P move in one minute. What caused it? CPI. The inflation reading came in hot. That's just to get some of you up to speed. Neither here nor there. It doesn't matter that it's 8.3%. What shifted, okay, is quite simply, well, now, I mean, what are you going to say? Inflation is simply out of control. The Fed does not have their hands around this, okay? We can come up with, again, 50 different aspects that are all going to be negative, okay, based around this. But look, the marketplace priced it in almost instantaneously, but then a precipitous slide actually continued. One of the points, though, that I want to make with some of the price action, okay, that has actually played out in today's trading session. Look, we're going to jump right now to a 30-day one hour. I'm going to remind each and every one of you, we're just right back to where we were last week. We're coming very close to the 3931 gravity point. People, that is precisely where I would like to start today's discussion of the S&Ps. 3931 inside of the S&P futures is an absolutely critical threshold. It's something that we actually mentioned extensively the last couple of weeks. And again, what we term this as a gravity point, 3931. Any trade under 3931 would be rather devastating for the marketplace. We'd probably retest into some of the lows. That's right. When we start thinking about lows, we've got to back out the time frame here very slightly. Let's go to the 180-day four-hour. Look all the way down at 3600. Again, this is a critical threshold. The point, though, being of me actually coming into the S&Ps and saying, hey, listen, yes, it was hideous. Yes, the S&Ps are down 4%. Yes, it's a trading session to remember. And I'm going to get into some of the details of why you need to be concerned right now. But lo and behold, okay, net, net, we're right back to where we were on Wednesday. You realize that we were down in the exact same level as this on Thursday. We had an explosive rally. The weekend video said, Litter, don't trust the rally. That's literally what the title was of the weekend update. You do not trust that rally. Here we are, what? Two days later, slammed right back down to the 3931. It was just a matter of what the catalyst was going to be. Okay. So when it comes to the S&Ps, <clears throat> there's nothing to see here. When it comes to the NASDAQ, I recognize the NASDAQ is down almost 700 points. There's nothing to see here. It bottomed out the other day at 11,920. Okay, so we're still off some of the session lows that we saw when? It's last week. That's last Wednesday. Okay, last Thursday, we were actually, well, right about where we are right now. And again, I cannot reiterate this enough. So, price action in the SPs and price action in the NASDAQ, please, we've just come full circle. So, what has changed and why is there cause for concern? Okay, once again, breaking under 3931 could be devastating because we've seen nothing. Okay but just horrendous volatility, okay? Really kind of grip hold under that 3931. In fact, even recent trade, and again, I'll reiterate, on this 30-day, one hour, even very recent trade, okay? We got downright wild under the 3931. This, it's just a place that if we don't hang on to, we start to lose the 3931 in the next day or two, you're gonna see some sparks fly in this marketplace that we haven't seen in quite some time. Why do I say that? What leads me to believe that 3931 is such a critical juncture? For that, we start looking at volatility. Okay, most people look at the VIX. VIX, what did it do? Took off to the upside, but it got absolutely parabolic. VIX exploded, okay, in a 15-minute window. VIX, though, I'm going to tell you honestly, doesn't have me concerned. 
It's the volatility futures that have me concerned. And the reason the volatility futures have me concerned, for those of you that speak geek, forget about the eight-day volatility futures. They are worthless to look at right now. The volatility futures have me concerned expressly because we are not okay in backwardation, but we are really, really close to it. And there's this like the perfect storm, the perfect confluence. We have the S&Ps okay, sitting just north of 3931, right? So the S&Ps, here they are. Look, they're sitting at 3957. <clears throat> but at the exact same time, take a look at volatility futures. We have the October vol futures sitting roughly at 27, okay, 58. Then if you take a look at the Nove, and I'm just writing them down over here, the Nove, we're sitting at 27, okay, 78. We're exactly 20 cents, okay, we're 20 cents away from basically going into what would be a critical backwardation. We're still in contango. Backwardation is when the OC starts to exceed the Nove. We're 20 cents away from, you know, trading a flat curve. But the key is this, the 39.31, we hit 39.31, this actually okay, shoves us right over the edge into backwardation. And then again, if we actually jump into backwardation, and for example, what would backwardation look like? This is when Aqua jumped 29, okay? And no, for instance, would be trading at like 28.50. What would happen in that instance is market making firms and all kinds of derivatives firms to hedge their exposure in these volatility futures, they're gonna sell S&Ps. So my concern is all of a sudden you come down to 39.31, we flip into backwardation and they start hitting the S&Ps with everything they've got, okay? And we're really close to that. And that's one of the critical junctures that most people are not going to see in this marketplace. In conjunction with that, and I warned people about the dollar, okay? The dollar, the last couple of trading sessions backed off. Now it's gone parabolic again. The dollar, absolutely vicious move to the upside, okay? So what's the cause for concern? Again, same thing it was yesterday, same thing the day before. The dollar's a hop, skip, and jump away from 111. We break out above 111, it's over. S&Ps are actually gonna see some new lows, okay? We might be in the midst of a major repricing in the S&Ps. Normally I would say, hey, if it's just one thing, like, oh, we're coming down to, to, to 39, 31, that would be fine. 39, 31 is a hop, skip, and a jump away. We're real close to actually flipping into backwardation, okay? Then we have the what? Then we have the dollar poised to actually smash even the 111 level. We smash through that, it is over. That is just all hands on deck. Sell side activity would be horrendous in this marketplace, okay? To compound that even more, if you look at stuff like VVIX, that's the volatility, the volatility index, this thing is just waking up. It hasn't even gotten rocking yet, meaning that people are coming into this position, very, if you will, unhedged. And last, but definitely not least, to kind of compound our risks. If the dollar exploding higher wasn't enough, if the volatility futures getting ready to flip into backwardation, if the 3931 didn't do it for you, then check out the bond market. The bond market right now is running scared. You realize, okay, bonds tanked right up until the point they rallied. You go, wait, what? Yeah, this actually looked like trade was turning around and starting to buy bonds. You're like, but, 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 but interest rates are supposed to go higher. They did. We're actually going to cruise over to Tastyworks for this one under Tastyworks. Okay. We're going to come down to futures and we're going to go over to the small exchange. And I want you to see something wild that has transpired in here. And this is wild. You ready? I'm going to highlight the two year, the 10 year, okay, and the 30 year. Note, okay, that the 30 year rate, what did it do today? It's actually under under 3.5%, the 10 year and the 30 year almost equivalent to one another. The two year exploded by almost 5%. So what we're getting right now, okay, is this wild distortion, if you will, of yield curve. Short duration, again, short duration, okay? The two year is exploding higher in terms of its rate. The 10 year and the 30 year, <laughs> They're just kind of mellowing out. Yeah, the 10-year picked up a little bit, okay? The 30-year did what? Actually came off a little bit today. This, this is not a healthy move for markets. So we're actually seeing bonds, if you will, being bought, notes, okay? Down 21 ticks, but confusion inside of the marketplace. Again, the factors in front of us right now do not bode well for this marketplace. In the next 24 to 48 hours of trade, 
hold the line. 39, 31 becomes critical. Watch the volatility futures. The second the vol futures start to flip over, it would just be on. It'd be shock and awe to the S&Ps, okay? Even overnight trade at this point would actually concern me because everyone around the world is going to feel this move. This is going to be kind of a, a shot felt around the world in terms of financial markets, okay? At this point, well, we need to get a feel for the fact that this could very well be a full-fledged repricing inside of the S&Ps. That's it for tonight. Much more coming in the next couple of days. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.